A few months ago, before all this ChatGPT thing went mainstream, a friend sent me a paper called From Natural Language to Simulations, in which they attempted for the first time to automate the creation of a simulation model using natural language. And since we have ChatGPT available now, let's try on this video to create our own simulation model using natural language with the help of ChatGPT. Let's see how it goes. Okay, let's start by making a model in any logic that we will replicate using ChatGPT. So this is a very super simple model where you have a client arrival uh, with 30 seconds per arrival in average with an exponential distribution. You have a queue before a server that can only hold one client and has a delay time with an average of 24 seconds, but following an exponential distribution. And that's it. So if we run the model, we want to see different metrics in order to be sure that things are working fine. So we'll see the number of arrivals. We'll see also the average time in the server for each client. So in this case is 21 seconds. We'll also see the amount of people in the queue at any given point in time. And we will see how busy the server is. So in this case, 74%. Of course, if we run the simulation multiple times, we'll see completely different results. But uh, I don't care so much about perfect validation. I just care about the ChatGPT to give us results that make sense. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so this is a description of what I want to do. Basically, I give the information about the time of the simulation, one hour, the average server time, 24 seconds, the average inter-arrival time for clients. I want the queue to be plotted. Uh, I want other metrics as well as I explained. So you can read this on your own. We will do this in Python, of course, ChatGPT doesn't know any logic, so we will do it in Python, which is totally fine. So this is the result that we get first. And the result is terrible. So you have the queue length, which is 3000 and something. And the time in the X axis is not one hour. I don't know. I don't even understand with what this graphic is doing. Also, if we see the results, the final utilization is minus infinity. The number of customers served is 276, which is completely off. The only thing that is okay is the average standard time per customer, which is 25, it seems. But everything else seems to be wrong. Okay, so the next part is to explain to ChatGPT what he's doing wrong. So the server utilization is the amount of time the server was used by the divided by the amount of time simulation was run. So I'm explaining what server utilization is because if I get minus infinity, that's weird. Additionally, you have to assume that one client can be in the server. Just to be sure that ChatGPT didn't make any weird assumption that you can have more than one client in the server. And also the queue corresponds to the number of clients in the queue. You're not doing that. And that's it. Let's see what do we get now. Okay, so first the queue is only four all the time. This is already weird. And now the utilization is minus 158%. The number of customers seems to be okay now. And the average service time seems to be okay as well. And we have an error also, but we won't care about the error yet. So still, without reading the code, I just made an assumption that maybe this is the problem that ChatGPT is making. So I said for the server utilization, you shouldn't count the clients that didn't use the server. But he said, you're correct. For the server utilization calculation, blah, blah, blah. And it gave me a new code. Let's see what we get now. So we still have this queue length, which is constant all the time. But now the server utilization is makes a bit more sense. 93%. The, and the other two metrics seems seem okay. We still have this error though that we haven't fixed. Okay, now my next question was, why is the queue always the same value? And this is 
the most interesting thing. I just ask a question and ChatGPT understand that there's an error in the previous code because I am. it says, I am plotting the queue length using the range function, which creates an array with the same value for the whole simulation time. So ChatGPT is able to recognize the error and fix it. So let's see what we get with this new code. And what we get is an error. So we need to fix this. And what we're going to do is to just write the error that we get, which is range sim time q length have different dimensions and ChatGPT fixes this error. So let's see what we get. Okay, now we get a q length that makes much more sense and it's very similar to what we got in any logic. And also the results make sense as well. The final server utilization is 80%. Number of customers around 120 and the average service very close to 24, which is the value that we should expect. There's another error. So let's just copy this and paste it here. And also the, the graph we got, as you can see, has the time in seconds a bit weird and it only reaches 360. That's why I say also, why are the seconds in the plot up to 360 instead of 3,600? 3, it says I'm correct again. Let's see what we get now. We don't get an error anymore. And the results we get from the simulation make sense. So it worked. But let me be honest. This was not my first attempt using ChatGPT in order to do the simulation. I tried three or four times before that with failed attempts without getting the right results. And I was trying to check the code and trying to correct what ChatGPT was doing. But on my last attempt, I wasn't checking the code anymore. I was just making assumptions on what ChatGPT might have done wrong. And with that, I got better results. But so I'm not sure if you need to know code or not, if it would be better or not, but that's something to experiment. It's obvious that this is amazing. I mean, the future is clearly a future in which a simulation modeler is not needed or needed much less because just by explaining to a robot what we want, that robot is able to do something that doesn't require any knowledge of programming for the person who is trying to build the model. And this is crazy for me. The first time I read the paper, I didn't pay so much attention, but now that I actually did it empirically, it's pretty impressive. So let's see what the future holds.